three episodes left for the season. I can't believe it, but it's time to continue our Star Trek journey. Wait, 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 wait. hold on. What's going on? Why, why are we still in the old set? I thought you were moving. Why are we still here? Oh, yeah, I was going to talk to you about that off camera, but since you brought it up, uh, it's still happening. We are going to the new set. Uh, it ended up, the new set was a bit more costly than I expected, and um, there's been some delays. I had to make some changes, sacrifices, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to sell. Sell? Sell? What are you talking about? We, we, we made a pact that we were going to hold the line and not sell our Bitcoin. What are you talking about? Oh, no, I would never, no, we're not going to sell the Bitcoin. No, no, no. I have to sell the channel. Oh. oh, okay. I have to sell the channel. Yeah, I heard you. Personal log, Chief Engineer Jordy. Oh. Jordy log. Woo. I'm en route to the planet Ryza to attend. Ryza. That's where Picard went for his holiday. How about some different music computer? Something with a Latin beat. <laughs> Jordy really likes AI generating music. I'm with it. About how long till we get there? Arrival at Ryza is scheduled for 0932 hours. Ooh, three hours. Zip. <laughs> In order of decreasing energy. Oh no! <laughs> oh, okay, there's, uh, there's the... What a great reveal shot. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, a little Romulan uh, beam effect. The hook. That's all you need. It's crazy that the transporters are just able to do that. It's like an alien abduction device, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> if they wanted it to be. Captain's Locks. Oh, okay. You enjoying the video? I know I am. And we thank you for watching, but we also want to thank some very special people, some annual Target Demographic Tier patrons. And I got a whole list right here, and I'm going to read some of them right now to say thank you. So I just want to say thank you, Mark Magana, Peter Epperly, Frank Tagator, the Ted Berg, and Jackie and CB. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you in this journey until we die. The Enterprise has been ordered to accompany a special emissary from the Klingon High Council. Klingons and Romulans? Ooh. It was my decision to invite you to accompany me, Captain. Many on the Council have great respect. Pleased to offer occasional assistance to the Klingon people in the past. Sure have. I will ask our Chief Security Officer, Lieutenant Worf, to make a report. Uh, Captain, before. Worf's discommendation makes that very awkward. He's been a producer for a while, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, boy. It's the Romulans. Shoulder pads and all. Hey, take it easy. Hey. Uh -oh. That looks painful. We've waited a long time to meet you. Could it be because of hit? Him helping the Romulan in the enemy? Good. Very good. That looks nothing like him. I now have direct access to his visual cortex. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrifying. Once our work is done, the Forge will act normally, totally unaware of his conditioning. He is becoming accustomed to the horrors he is witnessing. Why is that character shadowed? Do you think that's the spy from... Uh... Who was like the Vulcan rep representative, then turned out to be a oh Romulan. Romulan. Do you think it's her? Look at this camera shot. I love this whole thing. Ah! Oh, dude, made me feel like uneasy. Yeah. Mm. There are some members of the High Council who would thank you, Worf, for killing Duras. Oh. Would ascend to head the Council. Many were not looking forward to that. <laughs> My motives were personal. What matters is you acted on that day as a true Klingon. Wow. Thank God, finally Worf getting some credit here. I'm tired yeah. of him being beaten down every darn day. Who is that man sitting over there? That's Chief O'Brien. Oh, that's how he sees. I want you to kill him. <laughs> good, Mr. LaForge. Very good. The other two, uh... People just like no reaction to Chief being shot in this simulation. They want him to think that's what's going to happen. It's all good. I get the feeling that something special happened on this vacation, and I'm not talking about computers. She wants to hear about your sexual escapades. <laughs> Her name is Johnny. Ah. Oh. But, uh, 
You wouldn't want to hear about that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, going on home world. Your medical supplies have been found in rebel strongholds. Explain this. It's the new toy, released this week. <laughs> Governor, you speak as if we are enemies and not allies. And you speak the lies of a tar kick. <laughs> You're done. Take it back. Gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know about Klingon blood, but he has ice in his veins. <laughs> Bro is locked in. I thought he was about to fucking knock him out. Ooh, I sh I'll just go to my quarters and change. They have more than one uniform? No, they open the closet. Remember Spider-Man 2? It's either like a suit or the Spider-Man suit. That's it. Dang, they even got the sight on there? Oh my god, Loki's gonna come through. Energy flows with the normal- Doors open from both sides. Mission aperture. Rapid Nadian pulse, right on target. Beam control assembly. I just want to like, you ever get the urge to do something? Like I just want to take my arm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, you know it'd be bad. We intercepted the weapons you tried to transport to the surface. Governor, I assure you. Do not insult us both by denying it. The Romulan's like, working from the inside to turn them against each other. Mm -hmm. It's a smart plan. Classic. Do you know which transport was used? I'm not sure, Captain. Whoever did it apparently used the planetary array to bypass... It was you, my guy. If only there was security footage of... Uh, <laughs> every inch of this Enterprise. It was me the whole time! It's the perfect crime! <laughs> you have any idea who's responsible? No, sir. Everyone with the necessary skills also has an alibi. Except for me, that is. Do you think they're gonna check the fingerprints in the room? We do not have much time, Picard. Just talking about the episode runtime? Kapla, Picard. Kapla. We've heard that before, haven't we? Yep. Kapla, Ambassador. Kapla. Oh, yeah. The investigation is moving faster than we expected. You're in danger of being exposed. I want you to kill him there in front of many witnesses on behalf of Starfleet in support of Creosian independence. <laughs> He's in on the Romulan plot. Oh, uh, okay, show. I did not expect this guy to be an op. <laughs> wow. That's the reveal we needed. Well, everybody goes through these occasional bouts of insomnia. There's probably nothing to worry about. Let's just make sure that there's nothing physically wrong. Hmm, it looks like you have Romulans hacked into your <laughs> visual lobe. I'll give you a pill for it. Yeah, that'll get rid of them with <laughs> three to five days. Yeah. And she's like so like <laughs> nonchalant yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. We need more than speculation, Mr. Data. We need to know who, what, where, when, and why. But we may be going to war. How about how? This is crazy. They're always just like on the edge of war, brink of war at all times. It's like, you know what, guys? Let's just get out of the way. Let's just go to war. Let's just get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of receiver would be capable of processing these signals? A system. Ooh, slow zoom. Now, how would how would Data react to, you know, thinking it's Jordy? His BFF. Sorry, Jordy. You're a traitor. Yeah. <laughs> Enterprise comes first, bitch. Like, I don't know what lens are using Whoa! here, but... I, it's like a wide angle. Yeah, like, what in the 2001 Space Odyssey is going on here? This is one of those rare few instances where I'm okay with being ahead because it is kind of fascinating to see how they figure it out. And we don't know, like, what's going to happen. True, Like, yeah. it's not all about them just figuring it out. Yeah. There's also this going on. Yeah. And it's like a race against time. Compare these variations with established Romulan replication patterns. The patterns are identical. Captain! <laughs> I wonder how, you know, it's a good, good point. I wonder how fast Data can run. Oh, that's a terrifying thought. Yeah. Probably like uh, the Phantom Menace. <laughs> Remember that? And you would never, like, get tired, presumably. No, no. Take Commander LaForge into custody immediately. Sir. That is an order. Oh! <laughs> he has ice in his wiring. <laughs> is not enough. Okay, here we now go. Now the this Federation guy. would murder me to achieve its aims. Did you not see me stop him? 
If I could explain this, I would. Luckily, we have someone who can. <laughs> I have narrowed the list of possibilities to two people, Captain Picard and Ambassador Kell. Oh! I will not submit to being searched by you or anyone else on this ship. We will take the Ambassador with us and search him ourselves. Oh! I believe it to be in all our best interest if I remain aboard. It's like Picard knows it's him. I will certainly grant you asylum. After you when you have been absolved of this crime. I was going to say, after you uh, submit to the search. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Whoo. And Klingon's got their own little different uh, beam style. I like, I like how they're all different. I love that. But I remember everything. There was this one night at dinner. We, we had this Andorian waiter. He couldn't get our orders right. It... Oh, that's got to be terrible. And tell me everything you remember about the shuttlecraft trip after you left the Enterprise. I unzipped my pants. <laughs> I'm just not sure. Believe it or not, that's a good sign. Uh. Oh, that's fucking score. I got us. It goes. <laughs> I had a feel like, is it just going to end? It's just going to end. It, ju it just ended. Oh. Whoa. I mean, I mean, I know we've had like story building in the past, but it's like that can't be a one off, right? Like there has to be more of that. I don't, yeah, I don't think the next episode is going to jump to uh, a completely different story, but uh, maybe, <sighs> maybe. Whoo. All right. Wow. This one's called The Mind's Eye. Here's what we tier rate the mind's eye. Three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> you know, it's like I was looking through the season so far the other day, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, man. Have I been too generous? Like, have I been too, you know, like uh, on these post reaction tier ratings? And then it's like I watched this, and it's like, how do I give this anything but an S? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I was thinking like, hey, it's like, what do I have to say negative about? I have nothing. Uh, S. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it. Romulan target, Jordy LaForge. He has no choice but to see what I wish him to see. They're programming him to sabotage the Federation. Do not attempt to leave orbit. You speak as if we are enemies and not allies. And brainwashing him into a ruthless assassin. The data, we have a known spy on board. I want you to kill him. Mind control on Star Trek The Next Generation. Mind's Eye, we both give this one an S. Obviously, both really loved it. Um, what would you, what was your favorite thing about the episode? What would you love so much about it? Probably that I couldn't find any problem with it. Probably that I loved it. <laughs> it was uh, a lot of fun, and it did something that we've repeatedly poked fun at, or have had problems with, and that's uh, knowing the issue, and the crew doesn't. And we're like, okay, like we know, like get on with it. But it did it in such a way that it was executed so well because of who knew what at what time. And it felt like a race against time. Like, is Data... And it was fascinating to see him figure it out. Watching Data figure out what happened with the shuttle of Jordy going to Ryza. And then Jordy making his way to the Ambassador, the Klingon people, and Picard, and uh, the Chief. And wondering, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And that tension buildup was so... Excellently well done with uh, producer David Livingston stepping out of the producer's chair and stepping into the director's chair for the first time in the show. He's been a producer all the way since back to season one. So I feel like he has an idea of what's good and what's bad in this show. And he took his notes and came in and just did it. And he didn't do anything like crazy or over the top in the direction that was like, whoa, you know, what chill, you know. But just like the reverse tracking shot of Jordy is my favorite shot of the episode where Jordy comes out of the turbo lift and is walking, camera's following him, and then he just stops and turns and the camera stays there. Yeah, there's plenty of those shots. And I don't know what lens they use, like a wide angle, like similar to just Jordy and the other dude in the elevator. And every, almost every scene with Jordy, and also the Romulans never came back. Isn't that crazy? In that episode, they were just there in the beginning. But every scene was so tense because you didn't know when... Jordy was going to snap. There was moments where, oh, is he going to do it now? Like, it was just a test to do it on Chief. 
it's like, oh shoot, is he going to do it to Picard? Is he going to do it to this guy? And then the reveal that the Klingon, the older Klingon fellow, is actually the rat. It's like, what? It's like, just excellent. And it just ends. It just ends. There's no happy ending, no, <laughs> oh, or just uh, no resolution. Just This is just something Jordy's going to have to work on. Yeah. It's great. It's similar to uh, End of Best, Best, Best of Both Worlds Part 2. Not not as similar, but pretty close where you can tell. I don't know if it's uh, Picard. He isn't fully 100%. I don't know if it's PTSD or if he's wondering what else is out there. But uh, just that ending where it's not just a solidified happy ending. Yeah, it's going to stick with him. Yes. You know, and right after watching it, we thought like, oh, this is going to get continued immediately because that's the vibe it gave. Uh, we already watched the episode after this, so we know that it, that's not the case. And But that's okay because it's just we know it stuck with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you know, like Worf's trauma, da- you know, Data's trauma, I guess, even though he doesn't experience the same. Picard, all of our characters basically at this point have gone through trauma that you know is going to stick with them. Uh, I thought that was great and talking about sticking the landing and that ep- last scene, that episode was excellent. Um, the score, uh, Ron Jones is officially gone. So, um, let's see if I, if it listed here, who did the score? Probably not. Um, but whoever did do the score, I thought did a great job. And especially that last scene, it, the whole episode, I felt dread. There's been a few episodes that have made me feel like this. Uh, the offspring was another one where, um, just the whole time, like, I know something bad is going on. Uh, this one is a little bit up front because we know what's going on with Jordy. But still, I felt just, like, this overwhelming dread of, like, you know, this isn't going to be good. Like, this isn't all going to end well. And, obviously, this one isn't as extreme as the offspring of someone, you know, dying. But just Jordy's mental state at the end of it. And, and uh, LeVar Burton, the way he's breaking down in that last scene, he's like, I remember it! You know, like, imagine going through that and being like, nope, you were brainwashed uh, the whole time. Still curious why Data said inac- it's an inaccurate term. Maybe because it's you're not literally washing someone's brain, I guess? Uh, Maybe, uh, yeah. Data is Something happened in the 300 or 400 years since current <laughs> yeah. times. Some, I don't know. It's probably what he means in a literal sense. Like, you're not washing their brain, so it's inaccurate, whatever. Similar to the whole, like, how f- finance works. The card's like, oh, we've grown past the need for luxury money. You know, it's one of those, like, oh, what did happen? But we don't know. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, so I loved all that. And just the whole execution of this idea, they didn't do anything that came off, like, goofy or silly. Like, I bought into the series and stuff at the whole time. Um, Really loved to get to see through Jordy's visor again. We saw it in season one for a little bit, Heart of Glory, at the in the first half. Mm-hmm. They've updated the look a little bit. I like the purples and greens uh, in there, and we get to see it a lot. It cuts back to it a lot. I really love it, uh, the one moment where the chief like steps in front of his visor when he's like, "Oh, Jordy, uh, you know we gotta do this," and it's just Chief's face like in his visor. Uh, a lot of cool shots there. Yeah, uh, I wonder his view. With what the Romulans did, did that change anything from how it looked in Heart of Glory? You know what I mean? Oh, because they've, like, hacked into it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And those, those symbols were coming up at the bottom. I was curious. Like, are those, like, Romulan symbols? Is that what that was supposed to mean? I think so. I would assume so, yeah. But, yeah, I loved all that. Um, the Romulan stuff was cool. Like you said, they don't come back, which is interesting. That's what part of why I thought this wasn't resolved. And maybe it's not. Maybe it comes up again later. Uh, what do you think about them being included in, like we're getting all these episodes now where it's like a mix. Like it's like Romulan Klingon. The Klingon guy was in on it with Jordy, you know, with the Romulans. It used to really be pretty segregated. Like it really used to be, this is a Klingon episode. This is a Romulan episode. This is a Ferengi episode. And they're kind of all getting in there now. I feel like this is the second or third time where they're really trying to get this war going with the Klingons and the Federation and the Romulans being the, and they've hinted like, Oh, there's a Romulan Klingon, uh, bond going on here and they they've never confirmed it until now it was sort of brought up or suggested but never confirmed in reunion yeah with, with duras and like the traitor going to yeah. for the romulans yeah. yeah and they never they never figured it out but i think this pretty much confirms that yes they found it they found the guy also the klingon a few episodes ago in the drumhead at the beginning of the episode who they were like oh he was a traitor gave the information to the romulans he was a klingon 
remember at the beginning of that interrogation episode where they're interrogating the uh, Klingon on board and yeah, the thing yeah. blew up. Right. So yeah, they've been teasing it a lot more and more, and I wonder what the, if that's going to lead to something, or is it going to be a Klingon-Romulan alliance against the Federation? Uh, it would be interesting. They've been teasing like a Romulan war, I think, since season one, and that Romulan in, in the dark, did they ever... Did, oh no! Yeah, they, it was just a shaded character. They, they never revealed who it was. No, because they never even came back. Like it was just That's, that is strange how they introduced that whole Romulan set and these Romulan people in costumes and just never went back to it. Yeah, but I love that opening uh, when he's you know going through the the torture, the whole device. Uh, Lavar Burton's acting there, uh, just like these shady, like literally shaded, but also just like all the Romulans, you know, are just like the one guy explaining it to all the others what's happening and terrible what's happening to Jordy. Uh, hard to watch but i loved it <laughs> uh yeah i uh i struggle sometimes to go to sleep i put on a sleep mask and sometimes my brain just puts images in my head that i don't want to see i'm like ah you know, you know yeah, what you've, I mean? you've told me about that yeah i remember you saying that like a long time ago too yeah yeah it's like sometimes it's tough for me to fall asleep unless i'm like dead tired and jordy basically went through that in this episode so for me it was a nightmare because for me like, i just opened my eyes and and it's over yeah because my brain my brain is being filled with what my eyes are seeing, but when my eyes are closed, my imagination just goes wild. I'm like, oh, don't want to see that. And Jordy has no choice in this sense. I'm like, that is my biggest, one of my biggest nightmares. Um, and to continue with Jordy, I love the whole, like, we never really know when he's, uh, like, turned on or not. Mm -hmm. There was that whole sequence where we were both just sitting there in silence watching where he's just in the cargo transporter room, and he's just doing stuff, like moving ships. And in my head, I'm like, and he's talking to the computer. I'm like, is this Geordi or is this Romulan Geordi? And we find out later it was Romulan Geordi, and I love that whole, it's not so, like, you know, yeah, yeah. not so clear. I mean, there, there are clear there, moments. There are clear moments with the score, and, like, the, it blurs the lines. It does blur the lines, yes. Yeah. Uh, before I forget, the opening scene, the hook, was great. Just Jordy in the shuttlecraft, uh, playing the music and everything. He's on his way to Ryza. Funny that they bring up Ryza again, just as a little thing. And then, um, you know, the Romulan warbird appearing in the background before he even sees it. Just excellent, again, from David Livingston there. And then he, you know, turns around. And I thought he could have had a, bit, a little bit of a stronger reaction. Like, he turned around and he's like... Oh crap! <laughs> it's like uh, you gave me a little more scared, but uh, yeah, I turned around and then gets abducted, and that's it. I'm like, oh, there you go, right in. Yeah, that, that was wonderful. Um, uh, yeah, and it was kind of like a bait and switch. Like, oh no, we're going to Riza. Oh, remember what happened there? Nope. What? Well, but we did have fun on Riza until it veered off because of Vash. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would have been open to just like a Jordy Riza. Let's see what he gets into. But I'm I'm glad it wasn't that. Like I prefer this. Right. Right. Um. Picard and Data both had ice in the veins moments. First, Picard, when the Klingon calls him the curse word, whatever he called him, and then Picard curses and Klingon back to him, and just their face to face. I'm like, oh. And like, Picard looked away for a second. I think he looked down at his uniform. But in that entire scene, like, the camera is locked onto Picard, and he does not break eye contact until they beam out of there. Like, he's just like walking backwards, walking forwards. Just like, like I know how Klingon culture works. I am not backing down like you want to go you want to go bro and like also that guy is what do they say the governor mm -hmm. was that ever mentioned before in <laughs> I don't other know. i mean i don't know how it's and, not, it's and not then there was the ambassador the older guy and yeah. he, he also said he was an emissary i mean yeah i don't know all the political terms but i thought act, the actors and everything were just like fine but none of them really stuck out to me like the klingons the Romulans are better. Yeah. I mean, I do appreciate the uh, Klingon rat giving some credit to Worf. I mean, finally. That was nice. You know, a little, I needed that for but Worf. But then he turns out being evil. <laughs> so he got credit from an evil person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But maybe we should have caught on because the whole hint of him being like, Oh, like we're glad you took out Duras and Worf's like I, I wasn't doing it, you know, for political reasons. It was personal. Like maybe that was a little him, like oh, this guy's not morally that sound. And then when he uh, when he says, oh, you were acting like a true Klingon, but then he is being a traitor because he's trying to promote, I guess, whatever this faction is of Klingons that want to be independent. It was very, uh, you know, real life example of like the U.S., which they have absolutely done this, like interfered in other countries to, you know perform coups or to overthrow governments 
but with, with keeping their hands relatively clean in the public because they don't know, there's no confirmation that we're involved, but like we're fucked, we're obviously involved, you know, and so them replicating that here, I thought very interesting. Yeah, I'm sure there's definitely an example from real life that they pulled from that maybe someone can tell us like what this was based on or inspired by it. I'd love to know. I unfortunately think there's countless problems. Honestly, I mean, it's pretty yeah, bad. Right out, your par- right out your paragraphs. It's pretty bad. Um, what else? Uh, and then after Picard's moment, Data also, when he puts together that Jordy's the one who did it and the, the slow camera zoom in on Data, and then he says, uh, what was his line? He's like, oh, when he calls him to Worf and he's like, he says the priority one, Priority one, detain Jordy. He's like, sir? That was an order. Oh, yeah, that is an order. Yeah, and he's just, like, walking down the hallway. I really wanted to see him run, but... Uh... Yeah, once I said that, I'm like, I'm like, oh, damn it, I wish I could see him run, you know, but... Nice reminder, you know, Data's second officer. He's third in command, so, like, he, he's in charge of Worf, you know? Be like, that is an order, and Worf... He's like, all right. And then, uh... I still thought it was kind of goofy how... I'm guessing it's because he saw Worf start to, like, come after him, but the fact that Jordy just walks up to kill the guy... Because, like, the whole thing was supposed to be, like, oh, you're going to say that it was in self-defense or whatever of, or defense of independence, whatever he said. But it's, like, if that would have happened, like, Picard didn't stop him and he just walked up and killed the guy, like, Picard would have been, like, what the hell? Like, I don't know what they would have, you know what I mean? It wouldn't have been normal. Like, they wouldn't have just accepted it. I don't know what would have happened. Maybe Jordy would have been put in jail. I don't know. But Yeah, because uh, when the Klingon dude is eating and Jordy comes in, what does he say? Oh, we're going to set it up like you were acting in defense of Starfleet for the, the rebels. Yeah, I thought he was saying, like, in defense of their independence or something. Like, basically saying Starfleet is in on it, which is what that governor guy thought. It was trying to accuse Picard of, like, oh, you guys are trying to get them to be independent. So he was trying to get Jordy to do that to basically confirm it, even though it wouldn't be, you know, Jordy not aware yeah, but it doesn't matter. But I just thought it was a little funny moment. Like he just walks up, and just goes to kill him right in front of everybody, <laughs> and just Picard because he's right there, just like nope. <laughs> and like Jordy, Jordy doesn't even try fighting after that. He's just like, oh, maybe you, Rymelin should have trained him a little more. I mean, we saw it didn't go well the first time when he hesitated. Maybe keep him. That, I mean, what he was on a riser for what weeks? That's what he said. Yeah, a couple weeks. I mean, that's that's a long time for the kid of. Got a better plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else on this one? I think that's about it for me. I mean, I, I loved it overall. No complaints. No rewrites. Um, just, just the ending scene with uh, just ending with not a, a solid solution that Jordy's going to have to deal with this and work on this. And and one of the few times that cutting to the Enterprise was very effect- effective for the ending. It was a long. It was like, is it over? Yeah, it's like we get another scene. We get another scene because so many times that happens, and then we do get another scene. So it's like, is that going to happen? Then. You know, produced by Gene Roddenberry. It's like, ah! Oh. Yeah, and for it not to be a continuation, just like, this is just what happened. Do you think there will be like a, a Sins of the Father uh, 2 reunion type exact follow-up to this? I trust the show. I think they've got a solid team. They know what they're doing, and they know they can come back to any storyline previously introduced. Yes, we'll, we'll come back. I'm sh- Don't tell me, obviously. But I'm sure something's going to happen with this. And I also wanted to say... For some reason, it seems like anytime Klingons are involved, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like their stories and everything are like more cinematic and just a lot of the time feel like bigger. Like it makes the show bigger. And not always, I'm trying to think, have there been, is there like a bad episode I didn't like with Klingons? I don't think so, but. I'm sure there's plenty from uh, the original series. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about that. Those aren't real Klingons. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> TNG wise, like especially last season and this season it feels like when it's a Klingon episode it's like oh this is it's like bigger it's like it makes it feel bigger and I don't know what it's all leading to like I don't know what all the Klingon stuff is leading to but I just feel like that's the one storyline in this for in this series TNG that's been like slowly just putting pieces together now I I don't think that from day one they had this whole mapped out plan I'm not going to give them that much credit but I do think you know people like uh Jerry Taylor Ronald Moore um, you know, other people involved on, on kind of the bigger picture stuff are kind of laying something out. But I just don't know what that is yet. They've been teasing or speculating or trying to prevent a war with Klingons and the Federation. And the Romulans are, you know, the masterminds behind this and they're suggesting a Klingon-Romulan. My guess is, I mean, I don't want it to happen. 
because I don't know, it might last an entire season, but it, it's built into some sort of war here. Like, they're on the cusp of war all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yesterday's Enterprise was kind of like a teaser to, like, hey, this yeah. could happen. It's They're always, like, right there on the cusp, and they just always barely get out of there. It's like, it's got to be building to a war. Do you think it would be just a straight up three way war, or do you think there would be an alliance of some kind? Because in yesterday's Enterprise, it was a war with the Romulans. And that's what you would just like assume because they're the ones they don't have the treaty with. But no, no it was the Klingons. No, in yesterday's Enterprise, it was the Romulans. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, no, because the the, uh, the alliance with the Klingons was never formed. You're right. But I swear, he says when he is talking to the one, the captain. I'm sure they were fighting Romulans. He says like the Romulans are about to win. Like he's talking about how the Romulans were going to win. I thought it doesn't matter, but you're probably right. I mean, you're definitely right about the the treaty not forming because then at the end we were like, is it going to be Worf? And it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know. I think it'd be very interesting. What would Worf do if war if war breaks out with the Klingons? You know, it's like he's been uh, dis dis. Excommunicated? Excommunicated, but they use a different word. It's like discommendated or something Dis, like that. Dismembered. <laughs> Dis, uh, dis, uh, but would he put that to the side and still turn and join the Klingons? That'd be, that's still the craziest thing that can happen. But After everything they've done to him? Or about he's fighting for the Federation on the battlefield against against his own, against Klingons, and then he, he stabs one, they take off their mask, it's Dwarf. <laughs> his, own, his own son. That's being raised by his parents. Yeah, but he escaped to go join the Klingons. <laughs> All right, so the patron, 50% exactly, gave this an A. 23% S. So that's the majority there. 21% B. No E votes, but there were 2% D votes. Let's take a look. Damn. We have a tie for the most liked take, so there's two of them. Here's the first one from Ross Townsend. Cannot wait for Alex's reaction to the chief getting shot. There wasn't really a reaction because... We knew it was fake. A mirage. They even paused it before he shot him. And also, it was like leading up to it. It's not as if we didn't know what he was going to do. He told him to shoot him, so... It's cool to see, though. It was, yeah. I mean, I'm glad they used him for a scene. And... Oh, yeah, then later he spilled his drink on him. Was that just like a misdirect? Like, oh, we think he's going to shoot the chief, but he spills his drink instead? I guess so. All right, this one's from Greg. Troy should have known Jordy was kidnapped by Rymons and given false memories as soon as he told her he met a girl and it went great. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, that would have been wonderful. I'm glad she got to do her job as a counselor, though, at the end. You know, oh, yeah. That's a good job for her to do. And we have to shout out the first comment from Evan. Picard most certainly knew that refusing asylum would result in a death sentence for Ambassador Kill. His delivery of the line, I will grant asylum, after you've been absolved, was such a cutting way to doom him to execution. Yeah, I agree. Because he knew he was guilty, because Data said it's either Picard or him. Picard knows it's not himself. True, true. Uh, this one is from BN13. This is one of the defectors. D tier for me, just like Identity Crisis. This episode should have everything that makes an episode great. How can an episode with both Romulans and Klingons in it be boring? But it is. I can never get invested in this one. This is the vengeance factor of season four. Ooh, that's a huge insult to the episode. We're told right at the beginning that it's Geordi, and the entire episode is just waiting for everyone else to figure out that it's Geordi. Sounds like something we would say. Don't care about this one. It puts me to sleep. I may be biased, though. I don't like watching anything with torture, so I haven't seen this one in a while. Maybe I'll appreciate it more with a rewatch. I had no idea the community loved this one. Uh, I will say real quick, uh, everyone's biased. That's what an opinion is. Um, but, first of all, I don't agree, obviously, with, you know, Vengeance Factor of Season 4 is, is diabolical. But, um, <laughs> I will say, there was a moment in the later half... Where I did start to think like, oh, is this one going to be really good? Like maybe a banger, uh, but not hit that next gear or hit that next level. But then it just did. It did for me. And I think it just comes down to some people it will, some people it won't. D is, is pretty harsh. But he brings up that common complaint that we have about it being something we already know. And, and to me, I really just think the difference is look at something like, I don't know if you remember this at all, but it always sticks with me as the perfect example. Lonely Among Us in season one with the blue lightning. Like, the entire plot is that it's this blue lightning inf infecting people, and we see it before anyone else, and they all act all weird, and then that's it. Like, that's the whole story. 
it's okay for us to know an element of the story. As long as it's not the entire story. Or the vengeance factor, the woman kills the people. We know that, and Riker doesn't, and they're putting it all together, and that's it. You know, as long as there's more to the story, like uh, the Klingon ambassador being a traitor. We didn't fucking know that. So when that was revealed, that had nothing to do with Jordy, us knowing about Jordy. So it's like, as long as there's more to it, I'm okay with knowing some of it, just not all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I explained in uh, our discussion how uh, I mainly gave this one an S because, one, it was great, but two, it takes something that I usually would complain about but executed it so well to where it wasn't a problem because they did it the right way. They knew how to make it tense. They knew how to feed us information, feed, lead us along, bring in new factors, and have that tense buildup of watching someone figure it out while something's happening to where someone's about to die and these two things are happening at the same time coming to the surface and then it comes together. Absolutely. That's how, yeah. All right, this one's from The Fans. This episode is easily S-tier. Very rewatchable. Agreed. Agreed. Goodbye. <laughs> Another TNG episode. Now in the books, did TA hate it? Or did they get hooked? Will they ever get it? We may never know. TNG season four. Let's go. feel sublime they tear into your favorites they love ones you hate yet you can't get enough of the reactions they make they pause for big moments and make clever jabs whatever the scene they will always yap they've been at this for years with many more to come join this journey set your face to stun warp speed engage engage warp speed engage engage warp speed should have caught laughing loud as plots unfold in this journey brave and bold exposition missed yet still they shine the sarcastic charm you can't decline guided by stars that perhaps align josh and alex in cosmic time So you know, I don't work Friday, so if you want to go late tomorrow, I'm all for that. Music to my ears. But today. <laughs> <laughs> but today, I'm out at six. I gotta leave right now. No. <laughs>